Hello, everyone. Uh, this is Ethan Lyon. I'm here today to talk about taking a trip to California and BigQuery. So let's say I wanted to go to, uh, I'm in Philadelphia right now, and I want to go to California. It's one of my favorite states, aside from Pennsylvania and Philadelphia. Love it here. Let's say I wanted to take a trip, and I wanted to take it as, as cheaply and fastly as possible, right? As fast as possible. And uh, I have two different options. So when I look at how long does it take to get from California to Philadelphia, we can see here uh, we have two different options. We can either fly or we can drive. And so let's see, the longest time that it'll take us from Google Flights is telling us it's going to be seven hours and 50, 50, 55 minutes and going to cost us $441. Now, it's actually not too bad, right? Um, it's great to know that you know within eight hours, uh, a working day, we can get to, to California from Philadelphia. Then when we look at how long it takes to drive, it's going to be 42 hours and arguably way more expensive, right? Um, you know, you have to pay for all of the hotels, all the food, all the gas, the wear and tear in your car. I mean, it could be like twice as expensive as flying. And so BigQuery kind of works in the same way. So how they're related is when you're using uh, clustering tables, or partition tables, it's like flying versus driving. It's a lot less expensive and it will get you there a lot faster. And it's kind of like, you know, if you if you think about land and how long it takes to get you from point A to point B, you with Philadelphia, you have to hit up every single one of these towns along the way in order to get to your end destination. BigQuery is the same way, right? Um, you know, if it doesn't know how to understand your data, that it's actually a date column or a cluster table, uh, cluster table, it's like, all right, now I'm going to have to plow through all your data um, versus just flying. And so I want to illustrate this with an example from Hacker News. Um, they have a great data set of comments and we have the data set is seven gigabytes, gigabytes uh, large and 19 million rows. Um, we're going to be using a smaller table. We're just looking at the last uh, five years because you can only partition, I think, on seven years. And so I want to show you what this looks like um, with cluster tables and partitioned. So let's look at the first example. Now, the first example is just I'm looking at um, just the author, right? And so what I did was I looked at who had the most comments uh, for a single day. And it was this user just play. And we can see here that the it looked at uh, 4.5 gigabytes were processed and it took 3.9 seconds. Um, and yeah, this is just on the raw table, right? Um, we have the no partition, no cluster, and then the partition only and the partition cluster. So you can see that it processed pretty much all the data. And then we move over to the partition only. And you can see we didn't really gain anything here. And then we look at the cluster table. So it's slightly less data. And I think one of the issues with this is because there are so many different, this is clustered based on author. Because it's, there are so many authors, um, you don't really get a benefit. Now, if you had, you know, 20 authors or something like that, and each author had a ton of data associated with them, you're going to get a lot more savings. So in this Example, clustering tables is giving a very, very, very marginal benefit. Where you really start to, to get a lot of cost savings is when you start looking at dates. So the partitioned table, uh, or the non-partitioned table, sorry, um, you can see that it uh, processed all the data and it took uh, 24, or sorry, 12 seconds to process, just looking up one date. And this date had the most data associated with that single user. Now let's look at the, um, the partition only. Look at this, 2.3 megabytes, right? And so it goes from 4.5 to 2.3. It's a huge, and it took two seconds versus 12. Huge, huge, huge savings there. And then we look on the clustered partition table. You can see similar, very, very, very similar, um, just slightly uh, less time, less amount of time. 
And then when we look at, and the same thing is true with, I'm not going to belabor it with um, looking at the date and the author, um, you, got, you get very similar results to the time partition. And so what does all this mean? So we were talking about flights to California versus driving and one being probably more expensive than the other and taking a lot more time. And so when we look back at our example, we had 4.5 gigabytes were processed doing the with the raw data doing a date filter, um, which is 4,500 megabytes. And the reason that I'm converting it into megabytes is that we only processed 2.3 megabytes when we did the date partition table. And so what that means is we when we look at uh, the percent of megabytes to gigabytes uh, from the two different tables, and uh, we look we multiply that by 100 to get the percentage. It is 0.5. <laughs> it's it's half a percent uh, versus you know the full 100. So that's absolutely insane. And so when we look at you know when we convert this into dollars, if we were spending you know $1,500 querying our time partition tables. It would cost us $75 if we were using the uh, the partitioned. So non-partition is $1,500, and then $75 is e-partitioned. And so that is huge, huge, huge savings when you're using the date partition tables. Now, this wasn't the best example for cluster tables because we had a lot of um, authors. There are definitely use cases for it. Uh, we're uh, currently bringing in a lot of AdWords data, and that definitely has cost savings when you cluster tables because each you know, account has so much data associated with it. Um, so you prevent yourself from having to scan the entire table. So hopefully this, was, this illustrates the value that you can get out of date partition tables. Um, and hopefully you start using them soon. And there's lots of really great documentation on... Google's website on how to, to leverage uh, date partition and cluster tables. So I highly recommend that you check it out. Thanks and let me know what you think in the comments. Bye-bye.